Good evening and welcome to Intellect IS class. In this class, we are going to discuss public administration, which is our optional also. So, in this optional class, what options you have? First of all, we need to discuss optional and why options pata chalne chahi. Okay. So, in this optional class, what we need to discuss or to know how optionals are, how much options are available in our study. When we see the available options, we can say that the option is not, no any option is available. Optional is optional only in choosing. Okay, after that there is no option. So optional is public administration. Public administration. In public administration, as an optional, you know very well that there are two papers. And those students who don't know the syllabus, please go to the website intellectis.com. There is downloads and syllabus. Click there. The syllabus is this uh, mentioned and given there. You can have a copy paste also. Okay. So, in both the papers, what our strategy should be? So, first thing, class notes is to be made in the same manner as I have told you. So, there is no any issue how to make the class notes. Uska issue khatam ho gaya. Abhi basta kya hai. So, what we need actually. So, we need how we should study. What approach we should have in the study of optionals. To, jara dekha jaya hai. Paper 1 and paper 2. In UPSC exam, almost every paper, every paper, sorry, every optional, every subject has both two papers and the paper one of every subject is more or less theoretical. Usme theoretical aspects hain. So, theoretical aspects honne ke karen, you have to have a very clear cut thought process to understand the theories that has been given by the scholars. Clear hai? Chale. Second thing, in paper one, if it is theoretical, Then first of all, what we need to have, you need to have clear-cut thought process. And the thought process can be very clear-cut only in one condition. And that condition is logical derivation and logical interpretation. So, in your thought process, you should have logical interpretation, interpretation and logical derivation. Okay, these two things you must always have. Logical interpretation, logical derivation. Clear? Ab ye kya hai sab? What is this? Actually, it is what? 
this is basically logical interpretation and derivation basically is related with the logical logically moving ahead ka matlab kya hua if anything is just suppose ek example leta hu main pavard ka hi administration uh, there is a statement administration is administration whether public or private so logical interpretation and logical derivation kya hai to first of all we need to derive something so okay so in this statement what we are getting administration is administration whether public or private so when you are moving i had to derive it you can say in this administration there are two type of entities or bodies or aspects administration has two aspects public and private okay ye hai derivation but this statement is saying that administration is administration whether public or private so now the term is of interpretation what you can interpret how you can interpret so you can interpret by just seeing this statement uh, and just thinking over it administration is administration whether public or private it means this statement or the scholar who has given this statement wants to make it clear the administration ka jo bhi theory ho प्रिंसिपल हो एनी थिंग लाइक थ्योरी प्रिंसिपल वट एवर इज बेसिकली सेम फॉर पब्लिक एंड प्राइवेट बोथ टाइप ऑफ एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन क्लियर बट वट वी नो प्रेजेंटली इन प्राइवेट सेक्टर वी डोंट यूज द टर्म एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन वी यूज द टर्म management and in public sector we use the term administration public sector means the government sector and private sector means the private sector so here we use the term management and here we use the term administration so another interpretation of this term is whether it is management or it is administration both are same clear hai both are same this is what is being told by the scholar though in later years when he was given or when the scholar was given this statement after some years this gone <coughs> this gone to be proved this was proved to be wrong lekin us samay present at that moment of time it was accepted and this was a very initial phase of the administrative development or you can say the development of the public administration as a discipline and discipline means the subject okay so you should have very clear cut logical interpretation and logical derivation and this is the example iska matlab ye hua ki when you are going to follow anything any theory any principle in this paper then you should always be very logical in your approach clear first thing second thing 
in this section almost each and everything is very much established all the theories are established at theories to establish hoti hai aapko pata you know very well that theories are established so if the theories are already established then the problem to deal the theories and the principle where the problem lies where what are the problems so those problems are related with the on, with only the लॉजिकल इंटरप्रिटेशन एंड लॉजिकल डिराइवेशन क्लियर है इफ यू आर हैविंग अ वेरी लॉजिकल ब्रेन देन फॉर यू टू डील पेपर वन ऑफ एनी सब्जेक्ट इज अ वेरी सॉफ्ट नट टू क्रैक एंड इफ यू डोंट हैव द वेरी लॉजिकल ब्रेन but you are in my class then you will have a very logical brain because i used to teach i used to develop each and everything in a very logical manner second thing of the dealing uh, for the dealing of paper 1 what is second thing second thing is we need to think in the manner of assertion and reason ya fir reason and assertion means if there is anything given like that administration is administration whether it is public or private if it was given then what was the reason Assertion तो वही हो गया स्टेटमेंट उसका असरसन सो इफ देयर इज एन असरसन देयर इज एन स्टेटमेंट देन वॉट इज द रीजन बिहाइंड दैट असरसन वॉट मे बी द रीजन बिहाइंड दैट असरसन क्लियर हो गया ये भी मेरे ख्याल से तो आपको या तो अब कोई रीजन पता चल गया इफ यू गॉट टू नो एनी रीजन then you will be in the position to assert to make a statement to make a universal statement are you to make a very specific statement you <coughs> clear hai mere khayal se clear hai samajh aa gaya aapko third thing in this de dealing with this paper 1 क्या होना चाहिए सो द थर्ड थिंग इज मोस्ट इन मोस्ट ऑफ द केसेस पीपल आर सॉरी नॉट पीपल बट द स्टूडेंट्स फेल टू राइट द आंसर सो हियर व्हाट आई हैव टोल्ड यू इन जनरल स्टडीज स्ट्रेटजी ऑफ आंसर राइटिंग विल प्ले अ वेरी सिग्निफिकेंट रोल जब आप खूब वैन यू विल राइट आंसर एंड आंसर एंड आंसर यू विल बी वेरी कंफर्टेबल ओके सेकेंड थिंग पेपर टू इज प्रैक्टिकल आर यू कैन से द बिहेवरल पार्ट ऑफ एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन एंड दिस बिहेवरल पार्ट ऑफ एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन इज बेसिकली ऑफ इंडियाज एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन and that is why it is called indian administration and if it is called indian administration then what you need you need to think about the administrative system of india and whenever and wherever you find any relationship between the paper 1 and paper 2 you should write in your answer you should mention in your answer that relationship also okay so in paper 2 dealing with paper 2 you need to be practical enough 
and when you need to be practical enough, you also need to be very focused on Indian administration. But whenever there, when there will be any relationship between two topics of paper one and paper two, you need to write in paper one the examples of paper two and in paper two the examples of paper one. Okay, this has to be done. Now, if you know the syllabus, then the, again there is a need to understand the syllabus. Knowing the syllabus and understanding the syllabus, both are different things. Okay, so my next step is to make you aware about the syllabus. Syllabus again kya hoga in two papers paper one and paper two. What are the specifications in paper one means what topics are given in paper one and what topics are given in paper two just see here. Okay, paper one and paper two. Chale. Public administration two papers paper one and paper two. If you can have a syllabus so please take in your hands and if you can't have then no issue chalega kaam chal jayega aap samajhiye in paper 1 there are 12 units okay in paper 1 there are 12 units and in paper 2 14 units paper 1 First unit is introduction. Introduction. Paper 2 also. First unit is evolution of the Indian administration. That can also be termed as the introduction. Evolution of Indian administration. What you will see here, here in this topic, there is a scholar called Kautilya. Thereafter, Mughal and British. Mughal and British. Okay. Here, in this introduction of the paper 1, there is the introduction related with the subject related with the discipline with the subject means how this subject yeah the how the public administration as a subject evolved clear hai idhar jo hai in this paper unit 1 introduction the evolu evolution of the discipline is basically given and during that period, what were the major shift? What were the major paradigmic shift that are mentioned here in paper 1? But in paper 2, there is three very major development. Kautilya's, Mughal and British. Kautilya, if you don't then Kautilya is no one but the Chanakya itself. Chanakya, Chanakya ka naam to sab ne suna hoga. So the Chanakya, okay. So Chanakya was a person, a scholar. So being a scholar, he has given his thoughts. He had given his thoughts. So in his thought, there might be several similarities or some dissimilarities of the thoughts of the scholars 
of public administration who are here in unit 2 okay so here in unit 2 administrative thought is given as a topic administrative thought t h o u z h t thought administrative thought in administrative thought there are several thinkers and their thought is given mentioned here so what you can do what you should do when you are studying this okay study this because this is the theoretical paper but when you will study or when we will study the paper 2 and we will start cotilla then it should be here that the comparison of cotilla with the theoretical aspect of the discipline is must and you know there are several questions asked by relating this cotilla with the thinkers of paper 1. For example, the question is related with the classical scholars. For example, the questions are related with the Max Weber. For example, the questions are related with the idea of scientific knowledge. So, UPSC also asks the questions by relating these two papers and we also need to study it in the same manner. Clear hai? Aap samaj rahe honge. Phir uske baad aap dekhye ki if here is union government, hai na? Union government means the section which is in polity. Indian polity mein hum log padhte hai na bhai? Union government, state government, ye sab padhte hai. Idhar aa jayega. Paper, paper 2 mein bhi. In paper 2, thereafter, in paper 2, several other is, <coughs> thoughts are given. Sorry, in paper 2, several other topics are given. For example, public sector undertaking, organizations, मतलब उसी में organizations वगरह सब public sector undertaking में union government, state government, rural development, urban development, the entire Indian constitution is needed to be studied here in paper 2. So, on the one hand, in these two papers, we need to relate each and everything and on the other hand, we need to focus on the specifications of each and every topic. The entire syllabus interrelations we will discuss in tomorrow's class. But what we will do today? Actually, today I want to make one concept very clear in your mind. Just because of the reason that in public administration you will read number of times, number of places a term state. 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 For example, state means a country. Okay? But the state word is used several in at several places and in several different meanings, different, different connotations. So actually for public administration and for the students of public administration, first of all, it is very important to learn what is state in public administration. What is state in constitution 
in Indian administration. So simply we can say state is a country, but in public administration, state has a very different connotation. And state had has changed itself time to time, time to time. So before discussing the syllabus, I would like to discuss the state. Padhana kaise hi samaj mein aagya. How we will study paper 1 and paper 2, we are very clear. Now, what is the prerequisite to study public administration? So, the prerequisite to study public administration is to know the nature of the state. Ah, state or you can say the nature of the state. state or nature of the state or transformation transformations in the concept of state and remember that we are going to study state from the perspective of public administration. You might be knowing the terms like legislative state, the terms like interventionist state, the terms like regulatory state. So actually, the countries of the world changed their nature or the character time to time due to the need and the demand of the society. But that need or the demand of the society was driven by the economic demand. Okay, so just see there are types of states, three types of states, means state jo hai, iska transformation teen tara se hua hai. Three types of states, first of all, laissez fair state. The second one is interventionist state and the third one is regulatory state. Okay, Jara Dekhi. Now, what is Lajas Fair State? Legislative state means what? Actually, the legislative state is also termed as the policy state. Why? Reason. Assertion ho gaya? Reason. Actually, the idea of this legislative state was based on the ideas of Adam Smith and you might be and you might be knowing well what is also uh, who was Adam Smith Adam Smith ka naam to suna hi hoga father of economics he is called as father of economics adam smith is called as father of economics why bahut sare reason economics wala padhata hai here in public administration what is the relevant 
which uh, which idea of smith is relevant here so actually adam smith has said that state should not interfere and should not intervene in any affairs of the society there should not be any interference of the state fir se main bol raha hu aap agar notes bana rahe to likhte chalenge there should not be any interference of the state in the affairs of the common man in the affairs of the society it means that state was not responsible to do anything for the people of the state so state was a response then what the duties and the responsibilities of the state was were there were there at that moment of time when adam smith was saying that so the state was responsible only for two things the first was maintenance of law and order maintenance of law and order and the second was revenue collection you can think about any kingship or monarchical state or you can think about the british rule in india or british rule over any country except the britain means their colonial rule so kya hota tha wahan pe they were collecting the revenue lagan vasoolte the wo log collecting the revenue and they were doing only one thing maintenance of law and order and to maintain the law and order what was the hmm instrument uh, the police so in administrative system only police was visible only the police was working that is why that ledger fair state is also called as police state and if anyone was not paying the revenue or the fee or the tax imposed by the ruler the police was there to snatch to suppress to collect clear hai i think it is clear so what happened actually adam smith father of economics it means that what kind of economies should be what kind of economies should be or what kind of economies may be if this idea is implemented so the first of all no enter ye ab dekho main kya karne ja raha hu logical derivation or interpretation dono so what will be the condition there will be no any economic activity done or <coughs> in which the state will be involved A state was not involved it is not like that just please listen here so okay so state was state was not involved involved in any economic activity state was not involved for example abhi aap dekhte ho public sector undertakings in india public sector undertaking in any other country at that moment of time if the state was not involved in any activity any economic activity so who will be involved 
or who may be involved in the economic activities. Only the private players, getting my point? Only the private sector, okay? So, that is why there was only the private player or the sector. It means that if the state was in so primitive era, so it means that due to this private players, what will happen? The capitalism will emerge. Okay, nothing else. Only the capitalism or only the capitalist economy. Clear, hai? We are studying public administration, but we are discussing here economy. So don't get uh, confused. Okay, economy has a very close relation with the state as well as it is only the economy that gives the direction to the state. Just for example, presently, the whole world is saying, uh, every country of the world is saying to its uh, citizens, please be self-reliant. Why? Just because of the region, economy. But niche chale. Okay? Chale, yaha par aage barte hum log. So, what is there? The private sector, capitalism. And this is the reason why you see Okay, legislative state kaha lagu hota hai? To bhaiya, pure dunya mein, aur dunya kaha thi? To Britain, dunya kaha thi? US, it means that this is only the reason we find or <coughs> we see, okay, we see the Europe and US as a capitalist economies or the capitalist states. Similarly, if you will study the ancient history of India, then you will get to know that actually there was no Adam Smith then also. There was capitalist economy in the ancient India. It was Kautilya only means uh, approximately 325 BC before Christ. Madhav 2600 years ago. The only idea which was advocated related with the economy was by uh, give, uh, 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 was given by Mr. Kautilya or the Chonakya and he advocated the regulation of economy. Regulation of economy by the state and several other things like the land was under the control of the government only, the ruler only. So, the capitalism was there and it also means that due to this philosophy, state was
So, what I was telling? I was telling that ki due to the Adam Smith's idea, the state was only the capitalist state and there was no any other uh, idea related with the state or the ruler or the government. And in whole Europe, US, we find that only. Okay? Now, let But what happened after the First World War? What happened after the First World War? There have been great changes, a lot of changes. And the economies were in a highly depressed state. And due to the depression of the economies, it was very difficult to run the state. Then the states started. Then the states started. Now I'm audible or not. Now I'm audible or not. Please write. So, after that, after the, not after the, in fact, when the states went in the depression, economic depression, due to the destructions caused by the First World War, it became very important to think about the role of the state as well as it also became very important. It also became very important to revive the economies. So again, a economist came and that economist given the idea how to overcome this great economic depression. Us economic depression ka naam bhi rakh diya. Great economic depression. And the scholar or the economist was J. M. Keynes and J. M. Keynes suggested that the states should intervene. Adam Smith has advocated a state should not intervene and now Keynes is advocating that states should intervene. So, kya hua? Interventionist state. Okay. So, states should intervene in the affairs of the common man and since then state started intervention but there were several questions what kind of interventions how state can intervene so all these answers were given by the scholar means jm keynes and he said that to overcome the great economic depression, the only way out is the only way out is kya? the only way out is investment made by the government. So, is ne kya bola? Governance should invest. State should invest. So, where to invest? Then Keynes said, if there is no any idea where to invest, then invest anywhere. Anywhere. Even he made a very uh, famous statement, dig well and fill them. Agar aap kuch nahi kar sakte hai, 
तो गड्ढे खोदो और फिर भर दो डिग वेल एंड फिल वेल इट मीन्स स्टेट इंटरवेंशन इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एंड स्टेट शुड वर्क फॉर द अफेयर्स ऑफ द कॉमन मैन एंड इन दिस मैनर स्टेट स्टार्टेड टू इंटरवीन स्टेट स्टार्टेड टू इन्वेस्ट एंड देन ड्यू टू दैट आइडिया डेफिसिट financing emerged ki if you don't have money then you can borrow and invest similarly interventionist state it means the state started to intervene in almost all the affairs of the common man and in due course of time dheere 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 the size of the state expanded several new departments were created several new works were came on the soldiers of the state now the state started to provide each and every type of facilities from warm to tom state was everywhere and this idea of the intervention of the state created or you can say became the main factor for the emergence of welfareism welfareistic state so in toto and in uh, nutshell you can say the interventionist state is actually the welfareistic state and the welfareistic state does everything for the people for the welfare of the people that does everything sab kuch karti hai kya nahi karti समझ गए बात अब जरा देखिए इफ द स्टेट वॉज डूइंग एवरीथिंग सो द साइज ऑफ द स्टेट विल इंक्रीज द नंबर ऑफ द डिपार्टमेंट्स विल इंक्रीज द मशीनरी विल इंक्रीज द ब्यूरोक्रेसी विल इंक्रीज एंड ईच एंड एवरीथिंग इंक्रीज each and everything increased and the size of the state became very very huge very huge and in due course of time it was felt that those workers government employees the bureaucrats who were working for the people were actually working for themselves in the late 60s and in the beginning of the 70s 1970s several scholars came to the fora came into open and they <coughs> started to raise the issue they started to raise the issue that the governments are almost failed it was jargon habermas a scholar who said that governments and of the government if the government is being uh, pointed out it means the administration so jargon haber must said that the state is unsuccessful and if the state is unsuccessful then reason 
What is the reason? The Harbor, Habermas and several other scholars, they said that the state is unsuccessful because of the inefficient administration. Because of the inefficiency, widespread inefficiency. Because of the wastage of the resources. Because of the ineffective administration. That is why the political scientists and other scholars given a new idea and which is which became the reason for the emergence of regulatory state. The scholars like Jurgen Habermas, Vincent Ostrom, Upchenson, uh, I know you don't, don't get tension that sir is naming so number of uh, scholars. These scholars will come in our process of study in the topics and we will learn each and everything about them. Vincent Ostrom, Jargon Haber, Habermas, Anthony Downs, several scholars and they all criticized. And their criticism was basically based upon the idea or you can say the philosophy which was neoliberal political philosophy. Neoliberal political philosophy, the scholars related with this philosophy advocated that a state is inefficient, bureaucrats are inefficient. That is why there should be alternative. This state monopoly which was <coughs> which was throughout the world due to the interventionist idea of the state. So that monopoly is to be reduced or you can say is to be checked and controlled. They advocated the market as an alternative. Market as an alternative. For what? What kind of alternative? So actually, the, due to the interventionist state, the governments became welfaristic kind of and they were involved in the supply of the goods and services. Clear? So all the supply of the goods and services were in the hands of the state or the government, you can say. So the state monopoly was there. And due to the state monopoly, no any option was available. And if there was no option, it means there was no any alternative available. And if the alternatives are not available, then the chances to choose were also unavailable. Chance neither choose can be. So, the people or the customers or the citizens, mm, they were compelled to choose only that which was being provided by the state because the state monopoly was there. So neoliberal political philosophers said that this state monopoly has to be removed. It has to be removed and a state monopoly can be removed by the market intervention. So the market was advocated as an alternative 
to the actually to the bureaucracy why the bureaucracy is and was the instrument of the government the state for what to supply to supply the goods and services and if the supply of the goods and services will be given to the private players to the market then the market become becomes the alternative to the bureaucracy why this alternative was needed so those scholars said this alternative is needed due to the reason that they are inefficient and market is efficient how they proved it they proved also actually they proved with the facts and the facts were on the one hand the market was growing very fastly aur ye 70s ki baat hum log kar rahe hain 1970s ki baat kar rahe hain 30s mein ye shuru hua tha 1930s so if the state dhyan dijiyega if be please be, be attentive if the state was responsible to supply all the goods and services and if the goods and services were being supplied by the state then how the market was growing very fastly flourishing very fastly why it means that people were going to the private players na people were going to the market and you know those countries were basically the capitalist to so capitalism to waha tha hi tha but state also involved and intervened due to the interventionist idea so why the private players were growing and flourishing so the reason was according to the scholars the state was inefficient and private sector was efficient and this is the reason why private sector was growing very fastly and if private sector is growing very fastly then according to the scholars there must be alternative to the bureaucracy and that alternative must be the market only aur koi option tha bhi nahi if the market will not supply in if the state will not supply to kya bhagwan aayega ka upar se the god is not going to supply man god supplied us on this earth with this brain okay so you can say i say we samajh lo you can say ek aur aapko example de deta hu you can say when the people were not so developed were living in the caves were hula la la the tribals were not knowing anything science was not developed then at that moment of time or you can say during that period people were looking towards the god hai na he bhagwan kuch kar de barish kara de barish ho jayegi if the rain will be there the cultivation will be possible and after that dhyan se sunna please be very attentive here in this adam smith era also during this adam smith era also 
people were not getting anything from the state so they were also asking hey bhagwan kuch de and if you want to have a very very live example so you can think about the british rule in india farmers rulers poor were demanding to the god ki saab bhagwan barish ho jaye to kheti ho jaye kuch kha sake okay so that problem exists here also but in this everything was given by government so ab idhar kya ho gaya jayega soch aadmi ka hamara aapka public ka oh it is a responsibility of the government government is doing this and you can witness this everywhere presently in india also ghar ke darwaze par gandagi padi hai it is the responsibility of the government to clean the dust and that sitch not your responsibility and everything is being demanded and was demanded by the state or this is the reason why interventionist state is termed as the welfareistic state and the welfare in the welfareistic state we say from warm to tom abhi to corona mein tom bahut ja rahe log from warm to tom everywhere the state was everywhere from warm to tom state was everywhere idhar kya ho gaya the market has been advocated as an alternative to this state or the government and the government machinery so the state kya karega state is not going to go back to adam smith and era don't think like that but in this period state will regulate not control isme kya karta tha state in this era state was controlling but in this era state will regulate that is why its name is regulatory state clear regulatory state it means that the state will regulate the market but not control and in this manner dhyan dijiyega in this manner or you can say due to uh, this philosophy liberalization emerged privatization emerged and globalization emerged so the liberalization privatization globalization is actually the product of the regulatory state or you can say the by product of the idea which was termed and which is termed as the <coughs> neo liberal political philosophy now neo liberal political philosophy was grounded and when it was grounded and landed in this public administration field so in public administration field ab isko hata de raha hu theek hai public administration field the neo liberal political philosophy gave the neoliberal political philosophy 
gave the birth of the new rightist political philosophy. New rightist political philosophy. Okay? New rightist political philosophy and the new rightist political philosophy Yes, definitely, <coughs> new rightist political philosophy, new rightist political philosophy, it grounded in public administration and it advocated that there should be choices available to public. And the idea of the public choice theory was advocated. So, here, you can see that with the change in the nature of the state, as someone has asked also, with the change in the nature of the state, kya change ho raha hai? Form of the government is also changed. Is that clear? When the state nature was changed from legislature to interventionist, the state became welfare state. Now the market intervention is there and now the state is becoming regulatory state. So remember these things and this is what related with the state nature. You should always remember all these three changes are the developments related with the state and if you will remember this then only you will be able to understand several concepts of public administration. For example, just suppose if the state will be legislature, then what may be the possibility? The capitalist will loot the system. Suppression, exploitation, everything will be there. So you can see the movies of the 60s and 70s in India up to 80s. In every movie there was a lala, a, a, a jamindar, a businessman, a jamindar, a landlord, always and they were involved in the exploitation and suppression. So what if the state will be legislative then that condition will be more problematic and this was the condition in US, France and almost each and every one was involved in the looting of the system. Okay, so today we have learned something related with the state and this public administration. In the next class, we will first of all discuss the syllabus and interrelations of the syllabus paper 1 and paper 2 and if you will ask any question then that will be answered no issue okay today it is the first day to take very rigorous classes so thoda thoda thakan bhi lag raha hai milte hain kal thank you and the timing will be same thank you